This is some of the fertilizer madness that I've dealt with through the last few years, and this is not even this is not even all of it. I, I hate to say, um, you could go through so much money and time and garbage looking for the right fertilizer. So, after reading many, 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 many things, um, experimenting and getting advice from wise, wise old growers, I thought it would be good for me to tell you what kind of fertilizer, I'm just, this is the fertilizer basics video, okay? The first thing that you need to know is that no matter what fertilizer you have and bells and whistles and fancy things and additives you get, and no matter how much money you spend on stuff, you are never going to have the healthiest plants unless you start with pure water. If you have hard water and it's probably over about, uh, I'd say 100 ppm of total dissolved, total dissolved solids, you need to get some kind of water softening uh, thing like an RO system or buy distilled water if you only have a few plants. So on that note, I will go to the tap water fertilizer. <coughs> This is a fertilizer made by, well, sold by Orchid Dynasty. They're a little nursery near here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And Salt Lake has hard water. It's not as bad as mine here in Idaho, but they have a fertilizer specifically made for hard water. I think it says dirty on here somewhere. Um, this has a higher proportion, percentage, of ammoniacal nitrogen to nitrate nitrogen because that has a high, er, sorry, a lower pH and will drop the pH of your tap water so that um, you can, so that the nutrients are available to your orchids. If the pH is too high or too low, the orchids can't take up all of the nutrients that they need. So you need to have a pH, I think they say 5.5 to 6.5. Um, okay, second, you need to probably have a fertilizer with little to no urea. Urea can't be taken up easily by roots, by orchid roots. It needs to be broken down in the, uh, by bacteria. And so, generally, in something like a bark mix, it will get flushed out of the pot before the plant can make use of it. It is good for foliar feeding, however. So if you've got a plant with no roots <coughs> and you want to spray it with something with urea, go ahead and do that. Basically every brand, I'm so sorry about the jiggliness of this, I need to get a tripod. Basically every brand of hardware store fertilizer that you'll find will contain a large percentage of urea. That's just why I say don't buy urea fertilizers because most of them have the majority of urea. Uh, you also need to get something with micronutrients. This doesn't have anything, and you'll find all this information on the guaranteed analysis. If a fertilizer doesn't have that, don't buy it. It's garbage, okay? If the company cannot tell you what is in their fertilizer on the label, like I see this all the time in the hydroponics stuff. This one, um, this Kalite, also has the little chart of how much <coughs> how much of a teaspoon will give you how much nitrogen so there we've got 50 ppm n is one third teaspoon and so on the msu fertilizers hang on this is the an msu type fertilizer also sold by orchid dynasty in utah also has um that on here somewhere yeah yeah down at the bottom you, okay, so you need to have something with no urea, the majority nitrate nitrogen, if you're using pure water. You need to have your micronutrients like boron, copper, etc. And you need calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium are the two minor macronutrients, and um, you can get into all kinds of trouble without those, especially with things like cattleyas and... Um, 
calcium, they often get calcium deficiency where the new root tips start, I mean not the new root tips, the new leaves start dying from the tip down because calcium can't be moved around in the plant from the older growth. So, okay, one, one uh, hardware store brand that I can think of that would be okay for orchids is called Goobler. It's G-U-B-L-E-R. And I don't have that, but they do come in little containers kind of like, kind of like this. I, I'm thinking they've got their micronutrients in there. It doesn't have urea, and um, I think that would be an okay one if you, if you only have access to hardware store types. But most people can order stuff online. So the MSU formula is good. It's been around for years. Um, you can use... You can buy stuff from Orchid Dynasty. They're great. That's where I get this. They do sell um, through the mail. They, I'm pretty sure they would sell you that. They'll sell you plants through the mail. So I think if you ask them if they would send you fertilizer, I think they would do that as well. Um, if you're in Salt Lake City, go check them out. They're awesome. And no, they don't pay me for advertising. I just, I like them. <laughs> so... Um, another myth is watering your plant before you put the fertilizer solution on. I've, I've read this in books, I've never read why that is the, well I know they say it could help your plant's roots not get burned, but the reason this came about was back in the day, I just learned this recently, this is why old grower knowledge is good, this, uh, on a Martin Motes video, I think it's called Florida Orchid Growing Part 1. He talks about how old, old time orchid growers used to be afraid of burning their roots because they didn't have the guaranteed analysis of their fertilizer. They would just um, toss a handful of manure in a bucket and strain that out and so they didn't know what was in there. But now we do know what is in our fertilizers so we don't need to worry about that. The one exception I might I might say would be fine or preferable to water before you fertilize is if your plant is really dehydrated and the roots are crappy, but I would just say boiler feed it or um, or just use a, a more diluted fertilizer solution I think would be an easier an easier choice. So um, for me in my temperatures, I do have calcium problems there's not enough in the why am I having a hard time with this in the MSU formula so I purchased this it's a chelated calcium and I also use Epsom salt I'm not going to talk about the whole CalMag uh, connection in this video but I will put some links in the description bar so Epsom salts are cheap. They're an old standby. I know they're like, it'd be fun if we had beautiful orchid growing labels like that, or orchid labels like, like that is so pretty. That's basically why I bought that food. Because <laughs> of the label. So, um, but yeah, orchid growing is not all sexy, beautiful labels and stuff. So, oh, another thing that I would say is worth the money is some kind of kelp product. This is one that I really like. It's, it's made by plant and garden, or house and garden, house and garden, in uh, Denmark, I believe. And kelp has hormones in it that helps your plants, ma you know, make bigger growths, and, and it can also help with um, some disease resistance and even mites. For some reason, it does something to mites that they can't reproduce as fast. So, um, it's got a, a bunch of good qualities to it. Um, so that's one brand. And another brand is the Maxi Crop Liquid Seaweed. But I think, I don't know, it depends on what you get. Like, I think basically they'll all do the same thing for you. But the, the thing I like about this is that it comes in this little... All I have to do is unscrew this and it goes by drops, so I don't have to measure anything. You just count the drops. So I, I find that really easy, and so I like this one. It's just easy to use. 
that's part of my whole thing is like I've got a lot of plants and I want things to be simple and easy to use so if I can just measure by dropping something out and not have to worry about my spoons being sterilized and all that then um then that's the way I'm gonna go so another thing are the ratios so lots of lots of orchid fertilizers have a high first first number like oh well that one is a 25 uh 2599 but I rewrote 999 on there because most of the urea is going to get washed out the old wisdom is that you need a high first number the nitrogen to make up for the bacteria in the potting in the bark mix that will steal nitrogen from your plant but this only happens after the bark has become pretty broken down so by the time that uh that happens you should have repotted already and also you've got the other factor that that bark mix even though it's being broken down by these nitrogen stealing bacteria it's also holding a lot more water and nutrients just because it's become more porous so um and i've noticed that a lot of when they've got like a nitrogen deficiency in a book it's always in a newly repotted orchid not in an orchid that's been in its pot for a long, long time. So, um, not too sure about that. But basically, anything balanced. Oh yeah, and if you use a 30-10-10 all year, you're probably not going to get as many flowers as you would with something with a with the less high number because um, too much nitrogen will impede flowering and also cause succulent growth that is more likely to get diseased and be softer and floppy and dark green. So, um, I think that's everything that I wanted to say, pretty much. Okay, so yeah, um, if you want to just go simple and, you, and you've and you already wasted money and you, or you haven't bought any orchid fertilizer yet, just buy an MSU orchid fertilizer, um, or anything probably from a, from an orchid nursery would be good. Just, you know, don't, just try to stay away from the pretty, pretty labels in the hardware stores because it's pretty much all the same garbage, just in slightly different ratios, but with the same exact ingredients, and it's basically all the same stuff. They, their purpose is to sell more products. Alright, thanks guys. Well, thank you for watching.